Hey there folks and welcome back to another episode of Solar City Garage. If you're coming back to view the progress on this, welcome back. If you're a new time viewer, welcome. And go back and uh, watch the videos ahead of this. You can watch step-by-step -step process of what we're doing on this Model T engine and transmission. Uh, anyway, um, we're back on the transmission. We're working on the triple gears. And triple gears tend to scare a lot of novice Model T guys. I was once one of them guys. And it used to be you asked for advice on like clearances and whether or not to replace pins and yada yada yada. You really never got a straight answer. There's always just mumbo jumbo. And then it turned into a heated argument. And he just everybody just said, you know what, tack with it, we'll just leave him be. But this uh, particular engine and transmission um, had had new pins and new bushings put in. And one of the bushings had uh, not enough clearance. Actually, they were all three too tight, but the one especially. And it uh, spun the bushing inside the triple gear. So, not a good situation. But luckily, the pin was still okay. This, this hadn't been ran very much. Um, so that's good. So we have bead blasted the triple gears and uh, we did that several months ago to be honest and we covered them with a product called fluid film as we did with the rest of the transmission parts and uh, I've already went ahead and just cleaned that off and I've pressed out the old bushings pressed in the new one with just a simple shop press. You can't screw it up. They go in from this side with the two little dimples. They have this face, you push it in, the face is the stop. They should go in with some resistance so that they don't spin. Um, sometimes it'll shave off just a little bit of brass as it's going in, but uh, nice, slow, steady resistance, and you shouldn't have any problems. Now, clearance. Oh boy, if you ever want to start an argument on the Model T Club website, uh, just ask about clearance. You might as well throw in there that whether or not you like water pumps and and uh, everything else that it, uh, they seem to argue about. But anyway, um, I like between four and six thousandths clearance. That's total clearance. That's four to six thousandths bigger than the pin. Because more clearance here, you're better to screw up and go a little big than a little small. You go a little big, it's not a big deal. And it's probably gonna last a little longer. You go too small, you're going to do what happened here. You're going to seize to the pin and things are going to wear out real quickly or break the pin off. And then you're going to be spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars fixing. So yes, I know I'm not a professional machinist by any means. And I know that boy tight clearances and all that stuff is just what most guys like that live for. But this is where it's okay to be a little, little on the loose side. So, anyway, enough preaching. Let's uh, get to reaming out this bushing. I measured the pins, added uh, four thousandths. I have an adjustable reamer here. I bought this reamer off from eBay. Um, it is a Dual. The range on it is twenty-one thirty seconds to 23 30 seconds and that falls into the range we need um, about in the middle of there um, and this, so this reamer was new and it was super cheap uh, and it's do all is a pretty good quality so sometimes you hunt around a little bit you can find um, a good deal this still had the protective sleeve on it so all right I have like I said measured and I actually reamed a practice bushing just to see if we were in the ballpark and remeasured it. And we were between four and five thousandths over. So perfect. We're not going to touch these sets, set nuts. And uh, they are snug down. That's one thing with an adjustable reamer. You got to be sure that those are tight. So, all right, here we go. We're going to do this dry. Sometimes this starts a little rough because of the oil grooves. So it's maybe going to chatter around a little bit. 
We're just going to go slow and do the best we can. I have the gear in the vise with a little paper towel in there just to help protect things. We have to go slow. We could back this off a little bit and take a couple different cuts, but we have it where I like it. And as long as we go slow, we'll be just fine. You see as we get a little deeper, it starts to go smoother. Of course these reamers have a tiny Scotia taper. So once it starts to pilot itself through, you can go a little faster. But there's no hurry here. The bushings in these replacements are a different material than the originals. That is why we give them a little more clearance. Just go slow. There's no race here. I'm not really pushing down at all. And yes, we're doing this dry. It's just getting better and better as we go here. Remember with a reamer, always turn it one direction. Okay, now you can see we just poked through our paper towel and we're going to keep turning the same direction as we take it out. Now we're going to Flip the gear over and we're going to go in from this side. Same way here, we're going to start off a little rocky because of the oil grooves. Just be patient, see how quickly it goes through from this side. Okay, so let's take it out of the vise. Got nice little brass shavings. <sighs> and it looks like a pretty good finish inside of there. There's a little bit of scuffing, but overall it's got a pretty good sheen to it. So there we go. That one is reamed. Let's do the next one. And I'm not tightening this vise very tight. Okay, so don't worry about hurting the teeth. Like I say, you just kind of got to start out, give it some support. Patience wins the battle. We're not hurting that start of the bushing at all. Sometimes these are a little stubborn. Like I say, we could have took a smaller bite. But once I get this set, I like to leave it. And as you go, it'll get easier. In case you're wondering, you'll see a little jiggle. See the gear isn't completely tight in the vise. It's, it won't turn, but 
I kind of like it that way so if it catches or it gives a little bit, the gear can give too. Winding up our paper towel there. Okay, made her through, keep turning the same way, pull up out, let's flip it over. Start it in this end. And there we go. All right, just like the last one. Like I say, there's a little dulling in there, but it's a pretty good looking finish. So, all right, let's head over to the transmission and dry fit these and see how we did. Hold on. All right, here we are. We are at the flywheel. It's mounted to the engine. And it's standing up here. Something else I was gonna say, this bushing surface here is a little proud of this gear. That is so the gear doesn't touch the flywheel. You can see at some point in time in his life, this flywheel's had a gear with a really bad bushing touch the flywheel. So we're not the first ones in here. We're not the second either. <laughs> anyway, just randomly pick a gear. See how they fall on real nice. Give each one a good spin. There's no oil on these. You see how nicely that spins? See, there's no drag, so almost a little vibration there. And this one, same way. Now, I also like to switch pins, kind of like the shell game. Each three of these pins are identical because they've been replaced before. And give them all a spin. And if they all stay the same, we've done our job. Now, with no oil in here, if you pick this up, you can, you can feel some play there. And that's good. And it, I hate to say I can tell what four or five thousandths feels like, but you just kind of can. So once it gets a little oil in there, they're going to be just fine. If you spin one like that and it slows right down, or goes like that, then they're too tight. So there, triple gear bushings are uh, done. I used to be scared to death of those. I'm going to uh, gather up the transmission parts and we're going to do some assembly. All right, hang in there. Thanks.